This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello there and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be attempting to fix some broken AM5 socket motherboards that I bought on eBay. This video has been heavily inspired by the Linus Tech Tips video that came out nearly a year ago, where they purchased several broken motherboards, all of theirs being Intel boards though. They then proceeded to have some incredible luck with fixing their motherboards, ending up with an 8 out of 8 success rate. Now that it's been a while since that video was put out, and broken motherboard prices have returned to a much more normal level, I decided to give the same idea a shot. However, instead of going for mainly Intel boards, I ended up shooting for all AM5 boards. This was for a couple of reasons, one of them being that whether or not I went LGA 1700 or AM5, I was going to have to buy a test CPU. And at this time, there was an insane deal on this Ryzen 5 9600X due to Prime Day, and that deal blew all other new and used CPU options out of the water for me. The second reason that I went AM5 is because it's currently a much more desirable platform, as Intel's LGA 1700 is at the end of the road for upgrades, and LGA 1851's current chips are a bit of a fumble by Intel, plus future support of that platform is seemingly unknown. So AM5 it is, and I went hunting on eBay for some broken AM5 motherboards. I came out of my shopping sessions with four motherboards, the first of which is this Asus Tough Gaming X670E Plus Wi-Fi. This board cost me about $65 broken, and this one is actually a bit of a curveball compared to what this video was originally supposed to be. This motherboard doesn't have any socket damage on it, which is what I'm mainly trying to fix today, and I decided that I wanted to take a chance on whether or not the board was called broken due to some kind of simple fix like a BIOS update. Sometimes people end up with motherboards that were manufactured before a newer generation of CPUs were released, and this is especially common with AMD's platforms because of how long their sockets are supported. And in this case, this board, which released alongside Ryzen 7000 series chips, might have been given a 9000 series chip and gotten confused, causing it to not post. Thankfully, a feature that's much more common now is available on this board, and that is BIOS Flashback. This feature allows you to update the BIOS version on the motherboard without even having a CPU or RAM installed. All you need is the motherboard, a power supply, and your USB stick with a new BIOS file on it. And now that I mentioned the power supply, this is probably a good time to also slot in some more info on the rest of the test setup, as I haven't mentioned the power supply or RAM that I'm using until now. I'm using a Corsair RM850E power supply, and I have two 16GB sticks of G-Skill Ripjaws S5 DDR5 6000MHz RAM to test with. But anyway, after getting everything plugged into this board to firstly attempt to recreate the issue that was described, I powered the system on, and as expected, was greeted with no post. Now, concerningly for my hopes of this board being a simple BIOS update fix, when the board failed to post, it was spitting out a DRAM debug LED as opposed to a CPU LED. If the board had an outdated BIOS version for a 9000 series chip, it would be much more likely that the debug LED would indicate a CPU issue, but nevertheless, I continued on with my original BIOS flashing plan. After giving the board a reboot and several minutes to see if it was memory training, of course. After letting the board do its BIOS flashback off of a USB stick, I attempted to boot it up again. Sadly though, the board still failed to post and gave the same debug light. I then shifted to attempting to start the motherboard up with just a single stick of RAM installed, and I went through all four of the motherboard's DIMM slots with this stick of RAM, but this was to no avail. I attempted a CMOS reset as well, and also checked that the CMOS battery was in good shape, but still, I couldn't get anything other than that orange DRAM LED coming out of this motherboard. I know that my DIMMs are good, but on the off chance that they are having some kind of weird incompatibility with the motherboard or the CPU, I did eventually run down to the store and pick up the most bare bones DDR5 DIMM that I could possibly find, but once again, this board would give me nothing good. So, with a bit of a rough start to this video, but one that's not all too surprising, considering how risky I knew that board could have been, I moved on to thinking about some of the other boards that I have by first doing some pin fixing practice on an old motherboard that I had laying around that had absolutely wrecked sockets. The point of this practice wasn't to try and fix the practice board, because this thing was ruined, but instead, it was to see if I could get myself comfortable with bending pins back into shape using some sewing pins. So I chose some of the bent pins on this motherboard and just started trying to bend them back into place. And after only about 10 minutes of doing this, 
I was already feeling really good about my ability to put the pins back where they should be. One of the pins that I tried to fix did end up snapping off. However, I was actually able to feel that it was getting ready to break well before it did. And so I was pretty happy with myself for being able to feel that. And this gave me a lot more comfort when it came to actually working with the boards. In any case, this is the next motherboard that I'm going to try and fix. This is an X670E Aorus Pro X, and it's a super sweet motherboard. If there's one motherboard that I wanna get working today, it's going to be this one, because it's the highest value motherboard that I'm going to be working with, and it also just looks so good. Sadly, this board has much worse pin damage than I thought it had based on all of the eBay photos, so I'm going to have a much harder time fixing it than I thought I would have originally. Anyway, under the microscope, the pins look, uh, oh, why are the pins so good looking actually? Yeah, I forgot to hit the record button on the microscope for the first several minutes that I had with the motherboard socket pins. Great. In any case, I've got it rolling now, and as you can see, I was able to get the pins looking okay. The thing with this motherboard that was really apparent to me was that this motherboard's socket pins had been mashed down severely. So, although there were a few pins that were bent out of alignment, and one pin that was really quite messed up, which you can kind of see here when I put the board under the scope for the first time before the recording died, the majority of the work that I had to do was getting underneath the pins and lifting them up. Another bit of strategy that I used when doing this was to take my CPU and install it into the socket occasionally once I felt like the pins were in good shape, and this was to make sure that none of them moved majorly after having a CPU installed and removed. If they did, I knew that something was off about their location, and eventually, I had the pins looking pretty good, at least I thought. So, I took the board out, installed the CPU, RAM, and plugged it into a power supply, and then I gave it a power up. I was expecting the board to power right up with its freshly repaired socket, and I figured that everything would be perfectly okay now, because this should have been the only issue with this board. Right? Well, sadly it wasn't. This board didn't post after the socket repair, and instead gave me a CPU light. Now, one might immediately think that the CPU light would be because the CPU socket pins weren't fixed properly, However, I checked these pins several other times and could pretty much never find any reasons that they shouldn't be working. So I ended up going down an entirely different path, and that was the BIOS. I figured that maybe the pins were fixed, but this board was also older and had the same issues as I thought the previous ASUS board could have had. So I attempted to use Gigabyte's QFlash Plus to flash the BIOS on this board for like, five hours in total. It never worked, it never even started the flash no matter how many different BIOS files, BIOS file names, USB drives, USB drive formats, USB drive format allocation unit sizes, power supplies, CPU and RAM installed versus not installed, CMOS resets, and so many other things that were tried. It seemed to me that this board had some much deeper running issues than just the CPU socket, as the QFlash feature, which should have been completely independent of the CPU socket, just wouldn't work at all. So I never got to flash the BIOS and test that theory. I did bring it into a micro center, and one of the employees was super awesome and tried to boot the board with a few different AM5 CPUs, including several Ryzen 7000 series chips, and still, this board never booted up, so now I'm zero out of two, on my motherboard fixing ventures. I should also mention, I really did try messing with the pins several more times, even though I thought they looked good, but still, I had no luck with this board. So, time to push onward to board three of four. Third time's the charm, right? We have to win this one, right? Well, hopefully. However, before I get to the third motherboard in today's video, I want to tell you about today's video sponsor, PCBWay. If you're interested in fixing things at the board level, then there's a good chance you might be interested in the services that PCBWay offers. PCBWay offers high quality manufacturing services at reasonable prices, and they can produce all sorts of things ranging from custom CNC machined parts all the way to 3D printed parts and especially custom PCBs. If you're into working with electronics at this level, then maybe building your own circuit with a professionally manufactured PCB is right up your alley. So check out PCBWay at the link in the video description. Back to the motherboards, this is the lowest end board that I purchased for this video, because due to the price floor for these broken AM5 boards, it's really not worth buying broken boards unless they're at least mid-range boards, and preferably they're high-end boards. This Gigabyte B650 Gaming X AX has a few bent pins on it, which, once getting a closer look at them under the microscope, 
appear to have been pulled upwards. It's very possible a thread from someone's clothing or even someone's hair got wrapped around these pins and pulled them up when they tried to dislodge it. In any case, there were only four bent pins and I went right to work getting them fixed. These pins were a bit different structurally from the ones on the Aorus board that I had worked on previously, and I think that this difference made these pins a bit less workable and a bit more fragile. Nevertheless, I was able to get them all into positions where I felt confident that they should work. So, with my Ryzen 5 9600X and stick of test RAM installed, I plugged the system into power and was greeted with exactly what I had been hoping for, the sweet, sweet feeling of a red DRAM LED and no post. As with the other boards, I went through all of the regular troubleshooting stuff to see if I had missed anything and could get the board to post. I checked my work in the socket again and couldn't find any reason that the board would be throwing any kind of error, let alone a DRAM one. I was able to perform a BIOS flash using the Q flash feature on this board, which further led me to believe that this feature on the white Aorus board was just broken, but even after this, there was no post. Interestingly, this board did exhibit slightly different behavior than the Asus board did, because it would boot up, give a red DRAM light for about 2 minutes, power cycle, and then do it all over again. The Asus board, instead, just gave the error light and stayed on while doing nothing. Even with my barebones stick of DDR5 memory, this Gigabyte board was still unhappy and didn't want to post, so believe it or not, it seems like I'm still facing a 0% success rate, with officially 0 of 3 boards fixed. And at this point you may be wondering, well, are you sure that your CPU and sticks of test memory are good? Is there a chance you got a faulty CPU or have a faulty RAM stick and it's actually causing you to think that these boards are all failed? Well, after picking up this ASRock X870 board open box from my local micro center, I plugged my test CPU and memory into it and it booted right up exactly as it should. So yep, Definitely just a 0 of 3 success rate on these boards, and at this point, I had super low hopes for the last broken board that I purchased, this Asus ROG Strix B650 Gaming Wi-Fi. This board is a bit different than the other boards because it's supposedly untested. However, whether or not eBay sellers can be trusted to tell the truth when saying things such as that is iffy. In any case, this board doesn't have any bent pins, and I have no idea if it will post or not. So, it's another curveball but I figured it could be fun to see if I could win this gamble on this board, which was also purchased as a bit of an afterthought. I originally planned to just do three motherboards that we've already seen, but I tacked this one on once I saw it on eBay. In any case, after getting the board out of the box and fixing its broken M.2 cover, I installed a CMOS battery which the board had been missing and that I would have missed if my girlfriend hadn't pointed it out. Thanks, girlfriend. After getting the platform set up and ready to power on, I shorted the power button pins with a screwdriver and... There was absolutely no response. I know that this power supply is fine because it works fine with all of my other motherboards and I know that it's not due to the power cable because the standby power is live as is indicated by the RGB LED on the motherboard. This board never started up though no matter what I tried including a BIOS flashback which didn't seem to start properly because the power supply never triggered to power on and the status lights on the motherboard never indicated that it started. Well that's great. This untested board, which again was a bit of an afterthought, but still what I thought could be a fun shot in the dark, yielded no positive results. 0 out of 4 success rate, and I'm gonna call it there. After spending a little over 200 US dollars on broken motherboards, and successfully fixing none of them, I think I can conclude that this idea of fixing motherboards, at least with the specific boards that I had, wasn't very worth it. It is likely that I'd have had a higher success rate if I'd bought only boards that had bent pins and hadn't done those two other boards that were broken in different ways, but I did still have two bent pin boards, at least one of which was supposed to be a super, super simple fix with only four bent pins, and neither of those ended up working. The only board that I bought that was working throughout this whole fiasco was the ASRock X870 motherboard that I got open box from Micro Center which is supposed to function. And that board cost me about $140, much less than the $200 I spent on what ended up being e-waste. But although this video is ending on a very sad and quite negative note for me, I don't want to fully discourage the idea of fixing motherboards with bent pins. If you find boards that have bent pins and no other issues, you should be able to bend the pins back into place and have a working motherboard, and possibly get a great deal. It seems though, at least in my case, that I got boards with not just bent pins, but also other issues. And this actually leads me to question if eBay sellers that have broken boards that are broken for other reasons than bent pins 
are purposefully bending pins and then selling the boards under the assumption that the bent pins are the issue. I don't know, that's fully speculation, but it does make me wonder. Well, that's all that I have for you in this video. I hope that you were able to at least enjoy it and maybe even learn a thing or two. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.